Hello, everybody. I've been invited to join you today to talk about a very important subject: me. Who knows what type of animal I am? Right, I'm a fly. I'll bet most of you have seen lots and lots of flies, haven't you? I'm told that you find us flies rather annoying, so I'm guessing that you've swatted at one of my billions of cousins at least once in your life. I'm wondering just how much you really know about us. For example, did you know that I could walk straight up a wall? I'll bet you can't do that, can you? I have thousands of tiny hairs on my feet that act like suckers. These hairs attach to the wall, acting like suction cups. I am a house fly, the most common type, but there are many other fly species on Earth. A species is a group of plants or animals that are alike in important ways: horse flies, robber flies, fruit flies, gnats, and mosquitoes. Have many different species that all belong to the same group. Scientists group animals into different categories. What different kinds of animals can you name? There's fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and insects, just to name a few of the animal groups you know. Flies, like me, belong to the largest group of animals on Earth. Who knows which group is the largest? It's insects. For every ten animal species in the world, about eight of them are insects. That's about eighty percent. And scientists continue to discover more. Insects are small animals with six legs and three main body parts. We flies are insects, and we share the planet with millions of other insects. In many different habitats, habitats are the natural homes of plants and animals. Can you name a few? That's right: deserts, forests, mountains, grasslands, and tundra are some that you may know about. During the next few lessons, some of my fellow insect friends are going to teach you lots of interesting facts about insects that live in different kinds of habitats. We insects live all over the Earth, everywhere except the ocean. Insects can even live in some very cold or very hot areas of the Earth. We'll start today by looking at meadow grasslands. Look at this field of alfalfa. Do you see any animals in the picture? It just looks like an ordinary field without much going on, doesn't it? But don't be fooled. This field is teeming with life, which means that it is full of life. If you sat down in the middle of this meadow and closed your eyes, you would likely hear birds singing. But you might actually be completely unaware of the often silent, hidden world of insects all around you. Many insects depend on plants to live. Many insects eat plants. And some lay their eggs on plants. The plant on which an insect lays its eggs and which provides food for its young acts as a host and is called a host plant. A host is a plant or an animal on which or in which another thing lives. Each host plant attracts different types of insects. Many insects have developed very specific diets and would die without their host plants. Many meadow plants attract grasshoppers. Grasshoppers feed on the leaves and stems of the alfalfa plant. Harder to spot is the tiny leaf hopper, but this wedge-shaped insect can slow down the host plant's growth, turning the plant brown as it sucks nutrition from it. Many insects, such as these tiny aphids, can damage the entire meadows. Grasshoppers, leaf hoppers, and aphids are all pests. Farmers are never happy when they discover them on their plants because they can destroy their crops. But not all insects are pests. Who knows what this insect is called? That's right, it's a ladybug. Did you know that ladybugs are some of the most helpful insects on Earth? 
They feed on aphids and the eggs of moths and beetles that destroy crops. Lace wings and ambush bugs also eat aphids, so farmers are happy when they see these insects on their plants. From grasslands, let's move to a forest habitat. Both cone-bearing evergreens and deciduous trees live in this forest. Many trees, like pine trees, are hosts to a variety of bark beetles. These tiny insects can kill huge trees. How can that be possible? Bark beetles burrow or dig under a tree's bark, creating a series of tunnels in which they lay their eggs. Well, let's think about this. What does a tree need to live? A tree needs water, nutrients, and sunlight to live. By burrowing into the layer of wood beneath the bark, these beetles stop the flow of nutrients or food and water throughout the tree and often kill the tree. Lots of insects live high up in the tree tops of the forest, and many insects also live on the forest floor. Can you think of any? Ants are one of the most common insects on Earth, and many live in the forest. Unlike many of us solitary insects that live on our own, ants are social insects that live in colonies or groups. Let's look at an especially interesting social ant that lives in the rainforest. This is an army ant. Army ants travel in big cooperative raiding parties to hunt prey. Prey are animals that are hunted and eaten by other animals. They resemble or look like an army of soldiers as they move across the ground together. These ants are known for swarming their prey all at once. You'll learn more about ants another day, so let's take a quick peek at one more forest insect. This beetle is named for the long, large horn at the front of its head. Does its horn look like that of any other animal that you already know? I'm thinking of a much larger animal. Yes, a rhinoceros. The rhinoceros beetle uses its horn for digging places to hide and for finding food. Male rhinoceros beetles use their horns for wrestling with other males in an effort to attract a female beetle. The winner gets the girl. What kinds of insects do you think live in the coldest habitats? There are many types of flies on the cold tundra, including house flies like me. This Arctic crane fly has amazingly long legs, and guess what? Adult crane flies have no mouths, so they never eat. These mouthless creatures live only for a few days. Some insects are aquatic. Meaning that they live in or near water. Here's one that you may have seen in rivers, ponds, or streams. This insect is a dragonfly. A few minutes ago, however, I told you that there is one large water habitat that does not support the life of insects. Do you remember what that habitat is? It's the ocean. Let's look at the Earth again. Is Earth covered by more land or more water? Right, nearly two thirds of the Earth is covered by water, and most of that water is in our oceans. Think about it: oceans are the world's biggest habitat, yet no insects live there. But insects found on only one third of the Earth's surface are still the largest group of animals on Earth. Flies, grasshoppers, ants. Caterpillars, beetles—these are all insects. Yet they look quite different from one another. Different shapes, sizes, and colors. So, what makes an insect an insect? You'll find out next time. In the meantime, be thinking about how a fly is like a grasshopper, or a beetle is like an ant.